Okay, so let's learn how to use bridging curves to make this manifold uh, part here. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, open this exer um, exercise document, and I can put a copy of this in the chat for those who want to try to follow along right now. And then you're going to click on Make a Copy. Okay, so it starts off with just these two rectangular solids here. Okay, so front view going that way. So this is kind of how they're oriented right now. All right, so now next slide, we are going to make some bridging curves. So the first one, we're gonna select bridging curve from the toolbar. Then we're gonna click this edge of the blue plate and then the bottom vertex. And then that's gonna be for the first side. Then the second side is gonna be just this edge right here. And then our magnitude will be one and our bias will be 0.5. And we're just going to leave our magnitude one and bias 0.5 on all of these that we do right now. Okay, so I'm going to come over here and get. Okay, so I basically just need to do a bridging curve where I select the top segment and that bottom vertex, and then this segment down here. So the bridge curve button is gonna be underneath the helix button in this drop down menu. Bridging curve is right here. So for the first side, we're gonna select that line and this bottom point. And then for second side, we're gonna select this segment right there. And then we're going to leave magnitude at 1 and bias at 0.5. And it just automatically makes a two-point spline that connects those and stays. And we have match tangent, so it's matching the tangency to this segment here and that segment there. Okay, so now we're going to accept that. And then the next few slides are just going to have us repeat that for each corner, basically. Um, the next slide though, they show us that you can do it from the bottom up to the top, and it doesn't really matter which order you do it in. Whichever one you start with, you have to have the segment and the point. And then whichever one you end with, you can just have the segment. So I'm going to select my bridging curve tool again. And I can select the one, whichever one you select as your first side, you need the edge and a vertex. Then for the second side, you just select the edge. And we're going to leave magnitude and bias uh, at their default settings. So we're just going to accept this. And then we're going to basically just repeat that process for the other two um, corners. So bridging curve, first side, select the edge and the point. For the second side, you only need to select the edge. And we'll do it one more time. Bridging curve, first side, edge and point. Second side, just need the edge. So now we've got bridging curves to go between. So, and you could do this with, you know, like if you were building this part really to go on like an engine or something, you would know like the measurements, how far apart they are vertically, horizontally, and all that. And all you'd have to do is make these two surfaces and put bridging curves in between them to do a loft. So that's what 
I think we did a bunch of slides in one right there. We decided to work through all the corners. Okay, now we're gonna do a loft. And we're gonna select the curves we just made as guide curves. So we're going to hit the loft button. Um, we're gonna add to what we already have. The profiles are gonna be, we're gonna start at the bottom of the top rectangle and then end up at the top of the bottom rectangle. And so right away, it just goes straight there with straight lines, right? And it also is confused because I didn't tell it to merge with all because there's two different parts here right now, the blue part and the gray part. So when I click merge with all, then it knows, all right, I'm just making one part out of this whole thing. Then and if we don't want it to just be straight rectangles and straight lines going there, we need it to, we need to tell the computer, the program to match our guide curves. So we're gonna check guides and continuity. And then we're just gonna select the curves that we made. And each time we select a curve, it will just match that curve with the loft. So now we can accept that. And now we just have one part, right? So we're gonna rename that part air intake. Okay, now we're gonna hide all the curves. Then we are going to do a fillet on the vertical, those curved, those curved edges that we have. So 0.5 inch radius. So I'm gonna get my fillet tool here, change the radius to 0.5, and then select the four curvy edges. And as long as you have tangent propagation checked, it'll all it'll go and do it'll do the fillet up here as well. All right, got all four, so we can accept that fillet. And then we are going to do a shell to hollow this thing out. And the shell thickness is gonna be 0.1 inches. And we'll remove the top and bottom faces. So shell, Point one, that's, so faces to remove would be the top and the bottom. And so now you can see we have this air intake that will bring clean air from one part of the engine compartment to the other. And that's pretty much the end.